questions? All righty, we'll um, start off with Will. All right, hey coach, yeah, uh, one second, we'll get going. All right, Mike Trudell, please, thank you. Hey, Frank, what did you notice after that first time out when Miami came out with a 23 to 10 lead? Uh, you came back without LeBron and how that unit turned the game from that point. Yeah, they just played with great energy uh, and confidence. You know, we just, uh, you know, we got off to a little bit of a slow start with our pick and roll coverages to start the game. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, our bench has been good for us all year. Kuz and, uh, and Rondo came in and Alex and, um, you know, those guys break, brought great energy. Um, that helps us get some stops, get out on the break some. Uh, Doe orchestrated a few buckets for us and uh, helped turn the game around. Frank, you've emphasized the defense all season long, second and third quarters especially. Uh, what did you notice about the way that, that those units played? The effort. You know, I mean, our guys are just hustling their tails off, um, flying around on the defensive end, and then, you know, playing effort offense as well. Uh, really pushing the tempo on the break, uh, attacking the paint, and um, crashing the boards. You know, the, just the pace of the game really picked up uh, in those two quarters. And um, obviously, they were the difference makers. Frank, knowing what you know about these guys, um, is there any chance that there could be any complacency that comes in because of a win like this? Do you have to guard against that, or do you not even need to worry about that with them? Well, we always guard against that, uh, but in particular because of how much respect we have for this basketball team. Um, you know, not just their starting group, but for their bench, you know, the guys that came in towards the end there, um, you know, really got them off to a great start to their season. You know, when you look at Nunn and Olenek, uh, Solomon Hill, um, you know, was required later. But, um, you know, we have great respect for those guys. And, um, you know, we know that this is just one win. We're happy that we got one win. But, um, you know, obviously we got to, Keep our foot on the gas. Coach Anthony Davis in his post game said KCP saved us, and he was referring to the two threes he hit when you guys were down early that kind of seemed to get you going. Um, kind of, uh, I guess, zooming out of that, how big has his shooting been in these playoffs? I think he's above 40%. Yeah, his, his, uh, <laughs> it's been needed. Um, it's been a, a great lift for us uh, throughout this playoff run. Uh, but in particular, in that first quarter, we were struggling to score a little bit. We got some clean looks uh, early, but didn't knock them down. Uh, but I think Kenny had 10 points in the in the quarter. And, um, you know, when you're struggling to score for a guy to step up and make some plays like that on the offensive end, um, just gave us a big lift. And, you know, with with the guys that came in and subbed in, uh, you know, helped, that, helped co turn that quarter around. But, you know, the, Kenny's value is on the defensive end. You know, the tone he sets with how hard he plays defensively uh, really is infectious to our group, you know, and I think that that carried out uh, probably most in particular to start the third quarter, but throughout the game as well. Allison. All right, we'll start with David Gentlemen. Frank, what's the key to sustaining a run? You know, the, all teams go on runs, but to be able to extend it out, I think it was 75 to 30, the run you guys went on. Um, is it keeping the guys' energy up in timeouts? Uh, what allows you to make it be that long? Our guys are just motivated, you know, during that stretch. And, you know, obviously we didn't sustain it, you know, into the fourth quarter. But, um, you know, it's tough to do, especially in the playoffs against good teams. And, um, you know, I think the, the key is keeping fresh bodies in, um, you know, understanding the, the threats that are, that are coming at us. And that every time you go on a run like that, the other team's coach is going to change the game, you know. So, uh, you know, the next – you know, 10 point run has got to be different than the first 10 point run. You know, they're going to put different guys in there. They're going to change coverages. They're going to change, uh, you know, defensive scheme, run different action, you know, and you have to win each segment of the game a different way. And, you know, that, that holds true for the series as well. We're going to have to win game two differently than we, than we did game one. So um, that's probably the biggest key. All right, Kyle um, A lot of guys, we're talking about, and especially in the first half when you were kind of getting shooting from all over the roster, um, it's their first time playing in, in this setting. Well, not this setting, but in the finals. Um, I know you were talking about guys sort of being champions before they're champions, but what is there a part of you as a coach that's just sort of waiting to see like when they get in that situation, how they're going to react and, and what do you make of 
how those guys reacted? A little bit of me is, is eager to see what, you know, what guys are made of. But honestly, you know, we talked about this morning when, when you have big games throughout your career, you know, you really just you think about it all day. But once once the ball's thrown up and you get between those lines, you're just playing basketball, you know, and, um, you know, this is our 27th game in the bubble. Played three exhibition games, eight seeding games, 15 playoff games. So this is the 27th time we went through our process, film in the morning, you know, walk through a couple actions. Some guys get shots. Some guys go back to the room, go through the process of the pregame stuff. Ball gets thrown up and, and we play uh, and do what we've done for the last three months. You know, so um, yeah, I think you think about it a little bit uh, in the days leading up to it. But once you get in that moment, just play basketball. Dan? Frank, um, a lot of talk has been about LeBron trying to win a title for the third time um, with a th third different team. But Danny Green is also a, a three-time kind of finals guy. What, what is it about his skill that, that just fits so well when you're trying to win a championship? He's a winner. You know, he, he, he makes winning plays on a regular basis, uh, provides defensive toughness, uh, rebounding, all those, those types of things, his great IQ and understanding. And, you know, he's either going to uh, blast you from the three-point line or carry the threat to blast you from the three-point line, and that just helps your offense, you know. So, um, you know, it's no surprise Danny's, you know, had so much uh, team success throughout his career. He's just a winning player. All right, Jeff. Frank, we've gone all this way, and we haven't mentioned really Anthony Davis's game. Um, what did you think of his play in his first finals appearance, and maybe what allowed him to have such a big game tonight? I mean, they play small a lot. Uh, obviously, if we if we start big, he's got a, a smaller matchup on him. Um, you know, I think it starts there, but you know, in terms of like his success tonight, but he's just a he's a great player. You know what I mean? And uh, the moment doesn't change things for him. His approach is, is the same. You know, he's focused, locked in, um, can really hurt you in a variety of ways offensively. Uh, plays, leads the charge for us. We're playing effort offense, running the floor, crashing the boards, rolling hard, uh, attacking in the post. You know, his, his ability to shoot the ball from the perimeter, the way that's grown throughout our season, has been invaluable to us. And, you know, he's a jack of all trades on a defensive end. So, I mean, you know, he really just impacts both sides of the ball. And you know, obviously, the, the, the bigger the moment, you know, he's, he's just raising his play. All right, back to you, Will. All right, yes, yeah, Frank, I will take one more from Andy Kamininski. Hey, Frank, before the game, you uh, kept it close to the vest in terms of the starting center. What, what ultimately led to the decision with Dwight and the thought process behind it? Well, we wanted to win game one. You know, and we, we typically start a series, you know, kind of traditional the way we the way we would throughout the regular season. And um, we've done that a, th a few times uh, throughout these playoffs. But this team was six and oh in the first two games of, of the playoff series in each round. Uh, they went 2-0, 2-0, 2-0 in the first three rounds. So uh, there was a little bit of an added importance for me, uh, you know, in terms of game one. And you know, as, to, as, a, as to why we made that switch. Uh, really came down to their second unit. You know, their second unit plays small with either Iguodala at the five or even Kelly Olenek, who's a three-point shooting big. And, um, you know, we liked what, what our lineups looked, at, looked like with Markeith Morris at the five or AD at the five against the small ball look that we saw in Houston. So um, came down to really only playing one of our two centers. Dwight had a great finish to the, to the Denver series. Um, is a physical imposing presence on one of their best players in Bam Adebayo. And uh, so we decided to go with Dwight in that role. Great, thanks Frank. Okay.